afternoon, good evening, good morning, whatever time zone you are inhabiting while you listen to this. This is Barbara With, and it is April 9th, 2024, and I am reporting on my World Peace Tour Diaries number six, coming to you from Bucharest with my beautiful, beautiful friend and partner, Carmen Mira. And uh, we have been having quite the time over the eclipse. And I wanted to, while we were here together, capture just some conversation of sort of reiterating what we've been learning. And we did a channel this morning for us that was just phenomenal. And so today, really what I want to focus on, though, is talking about the divine feminine. So welcome, Carmen. Thank you so much for having me here and the adventures we've been on. Oh, Barbara, I am so honored and uh, happy to have you here and uh, to be here recording this um, this piece of uh, diamond. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for just some background and context, yes, I met Carmen in... 2008, I had appeared at an event in Taos with the Crimson Circle in September of 2007 called the Quantum Leap, and it was broadcast worldwide, all over the world, and as soon as I ended my part of the show, I went back to my hotel room, and not only did I have order after order after order, I had invitations to bring Einstein around the world, and that really set me off on this, uh, really the World Peace Tour that I wanted to do. I had just published Imagining Einstein, Essays on M-Theory, World Peace, and the Science of Compassion, and Jeffrey Hoppe generously offered to uh, tell me I could appear on any stage anywhere in the world where he was having an event, and so I used my intuition to look over his very extensive list of events he was having in so many brilliant places, Mallorca and Hawaii, but I had to use my intuition. And the first place that came up was Columbus, Ohio. (laughs) And it was in Columbus, Ohio that I met Kathy Klein and, uh, Jessica, who opened Hand with Seeds in Madison later, and that was a whole amazing journey that that led me. But then also came up Bucharest. Mm -hmm. I knew nothing about Romania. I had no thoughts about Romania ever in my mind, but intuition was telling me to go. And so I went. We had this phenomenal event. I met so many people, but I met Carmen and not only did we become very close friends, but she started to be my promoter and promoted several events in the in the years ahead. So when I landed a few days ago here, the day before the eclipse, I hadn't really seen Carmen in over a decade, for sure. Well, I can't remember exactly. Yes. And I knew, though, intuitively that I was being drawn here. And now there was a a potential investor that lives here. I knew that I wanted to go see, but I kept saying, you know what? Well, it's just for two days. And I mean, I'd love to see Carmen, but well, now I know because we have had the most phenomenal 24 hours during the eclipse. I don't think I could have had any larger visioning than I did coming here with and being with you, Carmen. Thank you. And, um, So one of the things that they talked about in the reading this morning and that we have been talking about while we've been together is the importance of the divine feminine. And Carmen is a, well, I'll let her explain what she does so you can understand it fully, but talk a little bit about the work that you do with the divine feminine. Yes. Thank you, Barbara. Um, I started this work Uh, after that quantum leap period, after we met, and I didn't knew I am a uh, divine feminine. I didn't knew at that time, but uh, Einstein, through one uh, powerful channeling, Barbara did uh, 
uh, did offering offer to me then back then when I was losing everything. I mean my everything. I had a, a small business, a tea house here in Bucharest, uh, a fiance kind of, uh, and I, I I was losing everything and I was me and God and forty dollars in the bank and I was like oh my God I am a good person why did this happening to me, and I called Barbara and I asked her please 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 make me make give me the information to understand why is this happening. And Einstein told me, <laughs> we are very honored to, Einstein and the party, we are very honored, uh, Carmen, to meet you again, because we we have insisted for you to come here in this time, in, in, in this mission. And uh, you were up there in one castle, <laughs> white castle with a white cat, you are kind of royalty. And uh, you told us, um, let me think let me think about this because last time when i was on earth they they sacrificed me somewhere in mexico where i was a a, a priest a, a virgin priest a priestess and uh, i accepted the mission and they were so happy to see me here <laughs> and i was like okay and i was crying i'm here and then know what i mean i am you know it's very hot here how i do it and uh, einstein told me you have a priceless gift you have the gift of healing and in your aura and in your voice and in europe there is none like you in america there are few but in europe you are unique you will start to work with the women because women will feel you you will start to heal them and heal their children and um, we we can see you working with the small groups of women and indeed i was starting uh, in the in in a important uh, city in in this this country in romania working with the teachers from the waldorf and they received the healing the healing, the physical healing, I was I was amazed too because I I wasn't there to sustain that workshop uh, for for physical healing. But you know when you do the work and integrate energetics and uh, emotions and me metaphysics of the healing, uh, they are reflected in the physical body too. Yes. So. Uh, I am a life designer. I help people to to heal, and uh, now I work with the men too. I work with the uh, persons from the all area designers, uh, uh, from aviation, politics, uh, doctors, uh, regular mothers, uh, um, students uh, for orientation in the career. I mean, we can solve everything, and I call myself a life designer because I help them to to know themselves and to heal and to to live the life they they desire to design releasing the the ancestors and transgenerational lines we work on that timelines and they became a new new frequency new vibration new life so i am an energetic doctor and i am honored to to inspire, <laughs> to to help people to to heal, to be happy, and to find who they are, their authenticity, and their beauty. Yes, and I just want to say that I was in Scotland a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. and Carmen and I made a an appointment to have a, a Zoom call uh, just to kind of see what was going on and what we were gonna do when we got here and. She got on the phone with me and she said, wait a minute, something's going on with you. You need some help. And she was so right. And if you, look, if you, if you listen to my last podcast about the effects of propaganda on the brain, I kind of shared with you this, this thing I went through while I was getting to the second part of my UK tour where I was falling into this depression and I was thinking maybe I shouldn't be on the planet anymore. It was so unlike me. But when she called me, she picked up on the center and she immediately shifted into, no, we're going to do some healing on you. And so she did this generational um, visualization, I wouldn't call it ceremony, what just application or... It it was, it was uh, energetic family constellation. That's healing. it, yes. And she talked about how within me and, and everyone, we have the, these 
generational traumas that come through our family lines. And certainly my mother was traumatized and had that lineage. My father was traumatized, traumatized me, had his lineage. And so in this work that we did, she guided me into how to release, how to ground in that moment, how to ground myself in, deep into the earth and to um, really move that traumatized energy that was coming from my mother and my father's generational energy. And I have to tell you, well, first of all, I wasn't anticipating that's what we were going to do. And I, I don't think I was even asking the universe to send anybody to help me. That's how bad off I'm my, in my mental capacity I was. But after that, I had this huge opening. And now I didn't like, it didn't just suddenly clear up everything in that moment, but I had this huge opening of how much trauma that we carry. Yeah. It is amazing and we don't know, we don't know and we endure, you know, we stay there and let's solve and let me tell, tell you this, uh, when you are in the midst of, of them all, you cannot solve by yourself. It's very hard. It's, it's very hard. You need a, a trusty person, a trusty healer to keep the space and to to help you to release this baggage because it they are in our DNA they are in our DNA they are in our mind they are because the mind is the the the, the field of the fight you know yes yes <sighs> and i didn't I, I and i have to admit i have this tendency because of who i am of working with einstein and working with the party and it is such, and for those of you who know me and know this work, it is such high level information mm -hmm. that it's it's hard for me to find a comparable person to work with for me. And not because I think I'm well above it all, but most people who do this work don't reach into the depths that Einstein does. And so it gives me kind of this false sense of security as if, because I know that, I don't have to do my own deep trauma work because I don't know why your mind gets, like you said, it's the place of the fight. So when you held that space for me and you, and you guided me so compassionately and so articulately into that process using the breath, using the body, using the releasing and letting go and, and, and just being aware when people just become aware they can help facilitate yes and they forgive the parents yes because when you see your parent like a little child a little little boy and little girl and they their parents didn't knew how to you know how to offer a quality time or attention or love or whatever one child needs yes because the parents were traumatized too. Yes. So it is like, you know, they, they scientifically demonstrated now that stress is contin con uh, it's contagious. Stress, oh. it's contagious. So you can imagine the parent is, is stressed and uh, it will contaminate the child. And the child, uh, for a child, parents are, are gods. Our gods, you know, uh, as child, we look at, uh, at our parents uh, uh, looking for approval, for love, for attention, for consideration, for, you know. And when you do not receive that, that is trauma. That is trauma. And yes, we were very, very traumatized. But the good news is we are aware we have the tools to do the work and in the moment you forgive your mother and your father and you you just understand them this is all they can give in that in in this moment or in that moment in whatever yeah? yes uh, you activate the compassion and you go into the peace the inner peace and you you uh, you just understand them. 
it's more easy to forgive them. It's more easy to forgive yourself for this situation. It's more easy to be free, energetically free. Yes. Yes, and when you did that visualization, my, mm. my mother had passed in 2018 mm. and my father passed in 2014. And I had forgiven her and had a wonderful relationship with, with her at the end of life. However, that is only one part of the energy. And I saw in that afternoon how still the trauma from... I'm sure my mother carrying me as a as as I was conceived and grew in her body because she was so stressed yes. during that time. But I also have a dear friend who whose mother is still alive and she's done a lot of work around, you know, revolving the conflict, but as you were talking, I thought about her and about because I, I'm, she shares with me her, her conflicts with her mother and, Mm -hmm. and, and her, she does great deep work around it. But suddenly I saw a trauma from not this time, from not 2024, 2023, a trauma that she was carrying from her mother ancestrally Uh and, and from a, a, a pastime that we we're not always aware of because here we are mm. we're having thoughts feeling senses in 2024 who knows if some of those feelings are from another life or another time but like you said i think once we identify the trauma that was instigated at that very young age mm-hmm. It just observing it shifts it. Of of course, of course, just rela- realizing. So it it's good to look to your life, to some periods of time, and see the big events, impactful emotionally, and you will find the root of the trauma. Why is it, it is so important to heal the trauma? It is very important because in every point of trauma, it is a piece of our soul. Right. Yes. And we need to solve that with compassion and light and bring our peace back, cleared out into the light of our creator, our God part, because we we have a God part too. Yes. I mean, let's use that. Let's access that. Let's activate that. When you have a lot of trauma, you cannot activate in totality your God part. This is, and the good part is when you do the work, the shadow work, whatever it is called, it is the same thing. Um, you have a higher vibration. You access your, your co-creator uh, abilities. You can perform miracles. If you stay in the same vibration, with the same thoughts, with the same reality, the personality will generate the same reality. Because it is the personality. It is not the soul. It is not our spirit who is bigger than we can imagine. Yes. And what I learned the few weeks ago we did this is Mm -hmm. just, I was humbled again to remember that this work it's so big and complex that we think, well, you know, I dealt with my trauma. I've healed a lot from my trauma. Oh, yeah, yeah. But there's pieces everywhere, like you say. And even if they're just little pieces that we have to go back to, and I really felt myself going back to three, four, five years old yes. in that meditation and pulling back those pieces of me that had been mm-hmm. really hurt by what was going on in my yes. family. Yes, yes. They are very subtle, but very important and essential. And this is a part of self-love. This is a part of doing the balance between the inner masculine and feminine, which is in uh, uh, most of us. And the dichotomy on this planet is uh, like the the feminine became more masculine. Yes, yes. Because they are forced to survive here without a man, without a partner, with ancestral trauma, you are you you are forced to, to be more masculine. You are forced to, to make the money, to be in action. Oh, 
to do it. It's great, but you need the balance of the feminine. I mean, mm-hmm. feminine is the intuition. It's the love. Love is it's, it's the feminine trait. Maybe this is, is so scary. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I've been, you know, I've been watching a lot of different podcasts lately with this debate about um, mm. feminine, feminism. And I grew up, like you said, I mean, I was a go-getter and I did everything. I had to earn the money and yeah. go get the bacon and fry it up in the pan. And, and I did a great job. I mean, I did a great job of doing everything. But to protect the, yourself. Yes. Like to protect. To protect yourself. Because if the man is not near you, you activate your inner masculine to be protected. Yes. To protect yourself in society. This is huge for a woman. And and under the auspices during that time when I was growing up yeah. in the seventies, when you know feminine feminism was the thing, and we can be equal to men, and we can go mm-hmm. out and do these things. And I really grew up in that mentality, and it hasn't even been all that long in my life when I began to realize that, wait a minute, I I am a woman. It doesn't yes. mean I don't love everything and that I'm capable of, but really nurturing this inner femininity and vulnerability mm, yes. very hard for me to do uh, yes because we didn't get used to you know we are trained programmed to be in that way and when you solve the matter with the maternal line transgenerational you can feel and activate your inner feminine you can access yes. the inner feminine, which will go in balance with the uh, inner masculine. And that is great because this planet needs feminine woman and masculine men. And let's recognize there are few masculine men and few f- truly feminine women in this world. Yes. And combined as a couple because the humanity humanity does not know how to truly love yeah. and to be in the couple and to respect and to you know people marry uh, uh, to be in the conformity and they marry and the man is i uh, wandering around and you know playing the field around yes i'm not i'm not uh, you know i'm not used to shame for this you know everybody does what they know better but we need to be aware if if we do this if if we live in in uh, in oh, less authenticity to say so we we are part of the of the of this uh, house of this war yes because it is not peace and balance and love in us yes in us and having grown up with a with a father who was a philanderer, I got programmed in my DNA that that's what's going to happen to me. I, I, and even today, I sometimes find myself, you know, thinking about, I haven't had a relationship in a while. I had a wonderful yeah. marriage, but, you know, we're still good friends, but we're not married. And, mm-hmm. and when I think about the coupling with a man, I find that's the first, like, just like this. It's like, he's going to cheat on me. Oh, my God. Just the, yes. it, just DNA yeah. from the body. And so yes. when you're in that space, it's hard to be vulnerable. It's hard feminine. to open. And you know why? Because to be open as a woman, you need to feel the emotional safety first. This is why I tell to my clients, mm. please meet him at least five times. Have five dates, real dates, not online dates. Real dates, see him. Uh, spend a weekend with him to see his habits yes and at the first and after five dates you can open if you feel the sexual portal but not until then and uh, at the first date the first meeting articulate what you desire from this relationship articulate part of let's say contract because it is transactional yes it is i mean Maybe it is not a right on contract, but it is. And you need to articulate what you desire. I desire long-term relationship. I desire exclusivity. I desire this and that. 
and you be, uh, evidently uh, with a sweet uh, feminine voice and you my darling what are you desiring and listen to him and if if he is not ready to give you what you desire let him go yeah immediately it is not for you immediately it is not for you you lose time space if you are involved emotionally you are sorry yeah yeah <laughs> yes now i want to i want to parallel that with money okay because i feel like when you're talking i feel like something i never did was mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. i never mm-hmm. said here's what I want. And if you can't, if you can't Mm -hmm. rise to that occasion, then please be going. I was like, Oh, who's going to love me? Who's going to love me? Yes. From desperation. And they, they will take advantage. Yes. Desperate woman. (laughs) Okay. This woman needs, okay. It's easy to deal. Okay. Let's, let's keep her confused. Let's do whatever we desire to do sexually too. And they gain. You lose. Yeah. You lose your power. You lose your energy. You became a battery. For them, yes. For them. And I don't blame them because yes. I no, no, didn't. No. I had that desperation. Not you. You in general. But yes, yes. Woman, but I'm, I'm saying I, I. Um, what well, even when you, I recognize myself in that. I don't blame them. I clearly see that I didn't have the balance or capacity to. And even when I met my future ex-husband, as I call him, okay, okay. <laughs> yes. even then, I really didn't have the wherewithal to be able to be that strong in myself uh-huh. to be able to say, yeah. this is what I want and this is what I need. So getting back to the money thing, I also have had that in my life where, you know, I watched my father lose jobs yeah. and my mother was left having to work 60 hours a week at a job I'm sure she never wanted to work at, but did anyway. And that was my model for, for money. And so when I went out into the world, now I was somebody who pursued a passion of music. Mm -hmm. So that was what was the first mission. It wasn't making money. It was being passionate with music. And so I learned to live with very little, but that all sort of played into my trauma. Yes, and it it became a way of living, kind of. Yes, it was. Um, because yes, it it was the program you ruled. If we are computers, in the childhood they download the program. Pro- parents download the program into the child. So as adults, we need to delete that program and reinstall the new programs, the new visions. You know, and that makes me see now as we talk that yeah yeah. so I had 20 years of living that program was downloaded where it didn't matter if you made money because you were living this passion yeah but then when that transitioned to where I couldn't keep doing this and I Mm -hmm. went into the world Mm -hmm. I took the program with me it wasn't like now I'm going to the world now I'm going to make a whole bunch of money it was that I was making just as little money but I didn't have the passion Uh, (laughs) I was doing stuff I didn't wasn't passionate about oh yeah so, and that got programmed. Yeah. So there's so much to to undo. To undo, to undo, to 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 become empowered in our authenticity and knowing who we are and what we desire, knowing that everything is possible, that, but not just conceptual level. I mean, really, for real, it is possible to create. But first, we need to do the work, the ancestral clearing, the other lives, kind of, you know. And if you do not believe in other lives, it is like, it's okay. Because day by day life, what is to be solved will come. And it it can be in easy mode and graceful. When you do the work, it becomes more easy. Or it, it can be hard. Because when you do not do the work, yeah, it hits hard. Yes. It is not playful. Because we don't stop manifesting the trauma into uh, yeah. form. Yeah. And, and what you emanate in the field, it comes back. So this is, it, this is uh, very important to do, to do the work, to empower and raise the frequency and vibration. It is. It is not a luxury. It is. Uh, it is vital. Yes. 
And we were talking last night, I was sharing with you that because of these patterns that I'm just, yeah. as we're talking, I'm, I'm seeing that I left the passion, but I didn't bring in the abundance <laughs> yeah. of money, uh-huh. um, that mm-hmm. it's taken me a long time to feel like in my body when I say I'm going to manifest, because I want to be, I want to manifest my first thousand, my first million, sorry, I want to manifest and I say, call it my first million. Yes. Because I want that abundance. Yes. To be, and how hard it has been for me. I can say the words, but they even feel kind of hollow when I say them. And my, and, and yeah. Debbie will attest to this too, <laughs> is that because we were both intending to make our first mm-hmm. million. And, yeah. and yet the, quickly afterwards, I'd hear this little echo of, Oh, really? It, the money's not important. Don't go out to the money. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. And I was like, how do I get, how do I, tra- where is this voice? How do I transform it? And because of the work that we've been doing, and, and, and especially yesterday, because without saying who, we went to um, approach a very, very wealthy person here in Bucharest and to ask to partner, because I would like to bring conflict revolution and and we would like Carmen's incredible work on the divine feminine to um, add to his itinerary of what he does. And the whole day was complete synchronicity mm. from the fact that the Uber that we called didn't make it. And there was another Uber that came and it turned out that the driver had driven other people to see this man. Yes. And it just, it turned. And so we went out last night and we had a nice drink in the park. It was beautiful. And I said, this is the first time I don't have those. Oh, no, no, the money's not important. The very first time in my life where I went, oh, hell no. Yeah. I have the resources and the power and this work with Einstein. Nobody does this work on the planet. Yes. Like this level that oh I do. Oh my God. Oh my God. And oh. so I feel like this trauma, especially over the eclipse, because I really mm-hmm. wanted to not waste this time of of intention yeah. of the eclipse. And yeah, I, I just feel moved. Energy moved. Yes. Yes. And um, you know, that uh, luxury car, because they call it a, te- a Tesla it's uber luxury yes it was uh it was such a ride when we step out uh, in, in in the car uh, a specific w- w- song yes <laughs> started to play it was about empowering and uh, beauty and uh, uh, yeah 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 and the, the music was just one song after another talking yeah. right to us talking the universe was was talking to us and um it, it was and it is an, an, an amazing adventure and i love that <laughs> and we were driving and, and carmen looks over at a truck and there's a there's eagle wings. Yes, eagle right. wings. Right, it's yes. a security, yeah. and it was a Brinks truck. Yes, Brinks. And truck. she didn't know that <laughs> this is the truck that carries the big money. No, I didn't. Even <laughs> so, say she didn't. so yes. Oh my gosh, it's been just an amazing time that we've had, and so from here, um, I feel like for for people who are listening to Einstein, people who are the Einstein fans, that this is a time of empowerment and the opportunity to empower ourselves like we have never done before. And as I said, Carmen and I did a channel this morning that was just, we were both weeping (laughs) about where we want to go and our dreams and our plans and our intentions and our visions uh, coming up, uh, which also led us to this idea that for those of you who are visionaries, and if you know the work that we do, that we did in this, do in the psychic sorority, where there's these three uh, psychological dimensions, I'll call them compassion, honor and articulation, and vision. And compassion is associated with the source and uh, Honor and articulation is associated with the intellect and the lens, and the vision is associated with the observer out in the heavens and intuition, is that for those of us who are visionaries, 
sometimes it's a hard road to hold because you have this vision and it's so clear and you feel it in your body and you're just so sure. And then nothing. Reality, it's it's not... It's not the vision. Reflecting yet. Yeah, yet. It's not reflecting yet. Yet. Yeah. But when the vision comes to pass, there's, he said, there's a wormhole that opens in time and space and energy that goes back to the moment you had the vision. And then all those years of doubting and mm. waiting and let, trying to let go, but still, and then finally just giving up and then having this vision come about. It's so important to keep visioning, even if it doesn't look like it's feasible or it's going to happen. If you have it in your body and you see it, then you have to let go of it. Yes. Uh, or if you receive prophetic dreams, I receive prophetic dreams for me and my clients. And sometimes reality uh, don't match because there is a divine timing. And they told us you cannot play with divine timing. Yeah, that's right. You cannot force or play you need to keep the faith to trust the sign and to keep working yes. trusting because one day it 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 is happening i mean one day it is happening it yes. is happening yes and there's this mystery behind having visions and prophetic yeah. dreams like how does that work and mm. then you tend to doubt sometimes but and i know that a lot of people out there relate to this just the everyday visionaries who just know things and and probably have those doubts. But we were talking about the example that on August 16th, 1994, I did a reading with Kim and Teresa, the psychic sorority, and they said, something big is about to happen. If we had to pick a date, we'd say September 19th. And every year, for until that was 1994, so in, until 2001, Every every September, we'd call each other and go, hey, something big is about to happen. If we had to pick a date, we'd say, and nothing would happen. But when 9-11 came, then we thought, well, okay, that must have been it. But really, it was 2007 mm-hmm. when I appeared at the Quantum Leap. And uh, the, it was the Einstein's first worldwide live broadcast to probably a half a million people. Wow, yes, and more. And I had arrived at the hotel the day before and was thinking, oh, I, I wasn't even thinking about something big is about to happen <laughs> until I looked at the at the schedule and realized I was scheduled to speak on September 19th. Oh, my God. And it just, that was one of those wormhole moments where I thought, <laughs> all those years we doubted or we thought or we were looking and it didn't happen and then we let it go. Well, they couldn't have said something yeah. big is about to happen. You are going to... Uh, leave your husband and launch a book that you don't even know that you're going to write that's <laughs> about Einstein that you don't even know you're talking to. And, I mean, they, it's not how visions happen. Yeah. So, yeah. And and I think going kind of cycling back to the divine feminine, which is that visionary part of us, that intuitive, deep, mm. intuitive, mysterious knowing that knows things that you can't logically describe. Yes. The more we honor that in us, the more visionary I think we can become. Yes. Well, we've been in Bucharest for about a week in this past day. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I acted on this. I asked to to receive a, a dilatation, expansion of the time. Oh. I yes, so, I asked for this. So we could pack in. We can. Yes. <laughs> a lot of energy. And it felt like like one week. It does. It, it, it has. You see? And we have this beautiful little apartment right in central <laughs> Romania that, again, was divinely guided to as I was looking on Airbnb. And I thought, I don't remember Romania or, or Bucharest's layout, but, oh, this feels good. And it's been so beautiful. Yes, yeah, very luxury. So many and quiet beautiful and meals and we've beautiful had. And, and yes, luxury restaurants around. And hotels and Ateneum and uh, yeah, Joy and Grand Hotel and Piano. Yes, yes. We've had a wonderful time, and we've, we're setting the stage for a new partnership that we're yeah. go, that we're doing. We've always been connected, but 
Uh, now it's very clear that uh, moving forward with this big vision, because if you know me, you know that my, I have this phrase that I use when I, and I, I, what I mean is when I say I'm going to take Einstein to the top of the world. What I mean is I am going to elevate this information, which is so vital, world peace, one person at a time, starting with each individual Mm -hmm. to a place where it can have a huge impact on the planet. And I have this dream that Einstein wins the Nobel Peace Prize posthumously, that they honor him for his work from afterlife. And when I see that, I see the top of the world being Oslo. And I happened to be in Oslo in 2009 when Obama won the prize. Mm -hmm. And so I was in the big crowds that were swarming outside the Grand Hotel where they sent out him and Michelle's double. That's what I think. It wasn't really them. (laughs) (laughs) He sent them out to wave at us from far away. So I have it in my body what that would be like. And I'm able to to see myself walking from the where they present the prize and walking the four blocks to the Grand Hotel and being received and and but never in that vision has it ever been about making becoming like a multimillionaire. It never was until now. And we have talked about I used to think that well that's greedy and you don't need that much money, but now I've had this total vision of the power and the effect that we can have on the world and what we use that money for yes we can do the good yes but for real yes real real high society this is the club i have created for my people and this is the real high society the real high society is high consciousness doing the good for you and for other for the brother and the sister on this planet yes and money's just a tool. Yes, there's energy. And who wouldn't want as yes. many tools as you can yes. have to change this world that we of need course. right now? So I feel a huge shift has gone on for me over this over this eclipse. And a lot of it is us coming together and we're putting together this dream. And it involves creating mystery schools yes. to help bring this magical, mysterious miraculous information to as many people as possible on the planet while we're here. Yes. And I am going to leave links to how you can get a hold of Carmen. Mm-hmm. And it, you have a website. It is in construction. It is uh, carmenmera.com in the future, maybe a few weeks. Uh, but I have an Instagram. Oh, great. And on the Instagram, it's a link tree who is connected with LinkedIn and Facebook and... Uh, oh, okay. Great, great. Yes, yes, yes. All those. And so people can follow you. And we did a yes. little impromptu channel last night in the park, sort of, <laughs> yes, that we live, we did, live we streamed did. to her Instagram account. Yes. And, uh, well, I just love you so much. And thank you so much for being my part. I say partner in crime, <laughs> but I really mean partner in blessings. In miracles. And uh, we're going to stay tuned because there are big things coming down the pike for us. And Thank you so much. Thank I am, you. I am, I am happy and honored. Thank you.